also the winner of tonight's tie contest. John, you promised that to me. Wow. Uh, next week uh, is Harry's birthday, is that right? Okay, so uh, we have a birthday cake and we have some candles, which um, we're going to have lit, and we're going to, let's bring up Harry's entire office staff. Come on up, everybody, come on. We're going to sing happy birthday along with the rest of us. time down to the second, but uh, <laughs> anyway, here. Here we go. <laughs> Sammy, you want to uh, be the conductor here? Uh, but except for Sammy. Sammy, stay up here. Court's still in session. Uh, Sammy's going to say a few things about Harry, and then we're going to uh, close this with uh, bringing Harry up here. Okay, so here is Sammy Weiss. Sammy? Hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here, I, I, I must say that. <laughs> later, later. In any event, we've, we've heard all about the lawyer, Harry Weiss. I just want to tell you a short story. Uh, I, was, uh, I had five brothers and sisters, and when I was uh, about 11, 12 years old, Harry took Susan, my sister, and myself, Barry and Michael, into his home. And we had a very ugly situation, and uh, with a divorce and all that, he, he took us all under his wings and, and brought not only Susan up and Barry and Michael, but also myself. And, uh, there was no ulterior motives. It was all from the heart and from love and from caring. I remember one story. I was brought, I, I'm not complaining, but I, was, I, I had a very <laughs> horrible childhood. I mean, I, I, I had two mixed up parents. But in any event, it was my, a month before my 13th birthday. And Harry lived in this big, huge mansion in Tower Road. And one of the butlers said, you know, it's Sammy's 13th birthday. It's his bar mitzvah soon. And uh, Harry said, well, did he go to Hebrew school? <laughs> <laughs> and then Harry asked me, I said, I don't know what Hebrew school, what is, what's Hebrew school? I didn't even, I didn't even go to regular school. <laughs> Which is the truth. And well, Harry said, he's got to have a bar mitzvah. There's no way. This is a Jewish family. He's got to have a bar mitzvah. And, and uh, there's the whole house is going crazy. Figuring usually in the Jewish religion you got to go to Hebrew school for two, three years, and you got to memorize all this. It's, going, it's, a, it's like a, taking history. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I, Harry said, "So don't worry, don't, Sammy. Don't worry. You're going to have your bar mitzvah. And it's going to be on the date of your birthday." So obviously, so he sends me to this place. And I see this big guy in black. He looks like Marlon Brando with a father of the Godfather. And he's, he's a rabbi. And I said, he says, I said, what am I supposed to do? He said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about nothing. I said, but they told me you gotta go two or three years. He says, don't worry, don't worry. He says, I go, <coughs> gives me all the stuff to memorize. I memorize it for three weeks. Seven days a week, I memorize it. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I remember I, I remember I, I said, I said, this is a little strange. No, no, fine, don't worry, my son. It's having another 
show. Don't worry, just listen to what I say. Any event, the, 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 the bottom line, he taught me all the, the things you have to say in temple. And I went to it. I had an incredible bonus, but when exactly the day I was 13 years old, which is the first party I had in my entire life. I had never had a party, believe it or not. And uh, I went to the temple, I said the whole shtick, the, the whole speech. I didn't know what I was saying, but I said it. And in any event, it, everyone applauded, and the rabbi would say, it, was, it turned out to be a, a fantabulous a, event. Afterward, there's a, a party in Tower Road House, and 2,000 people are there. <laughs> and when I say 2,000 people, I don't mean just people. I mean this is the Hollywood crowd. You're talking about 30 years ago. I'm talking from every major actor to every major actress you could imagine. People I've never met in my life. And here's a little kid that's never even had a party in his life. So you could imagine, all of a sudden, after 13 years of no self-esteem, no self-worth, a feeling like a nothing, I suddenly felt like a somebody. And all I can say is, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> There's only one other story, I want a short story I'll tell you, okay? I know more about this man than anybody. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, 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 he got me through law. I got through law school. I won't say how. I got through law school very quickly. Move, move, move. I mean, you know, he got me through law school the way he runs around in court. Um, in any event, I got sworn in at 12:30 on a hot afternoon. It was like 110 degrees out. He says, "Now you're sworn in. You're a lawyer." I wanted to go, go to Judge Ackerman's court and I get a continuance. <laughs> oh, oh, great, I got to go to court. You know, I was, I was thrilled. I go to Judge Ackerman, I walk, I took to walk in and there's all these people that have little badges on me, jurors. <laughs> and I just, what? and I'm, walk, I'm trying to get, I can't get to the crowd. What's going on here, you know, what's going on? So I go walk into Judge Ackerman's court and I, and I it's an armed robbery case. And I said, Your Honor, I start to ask for a continuance. Deny. Why did you say anything? I said, You're denied. Deny. I said, Good. So I rushed out to the telephone. I said, Harry, Harry, what do I do? What do I do? And the judge wants me to start a jury trial. What's the, I don't know what to do. He says, Play lawyer. Play lawyer. <laughs>
when I needed him, been my best friend. He's always been there. And that's, in this day and age, is a, it is a total rarity. And again, I thank Mr. Harry. <laughs> things I want to say that I would like to keep you all here and share these thoughts and feelings I have with you. Adjectives, overwhelmed is a modest word. It's more than being overwhelmed. I'm taken back. I'm choked up. I'm impressed. I'm in love with all of you. I've been in love with you a long time. I love you all over again. And I want to say, I am too, you'll know, I am 76. No. <laughs> August the 14th, Malio. <laughs> I was in Baltimore. As a child star, I was small. And the smaller and younger you were, the, the greater the talent you were. So I kept lying about my age. I, I didn't know. I, 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 and, but, but interesting enough, I give this advice to all my young friends. I said, if you're Rip Van Winkle and you woke up, what difference does it make what age you are? It's how do you feel? What do you think? And how do you react? And as far as I'm concerned, I'm still 24. I say that with total sincerity. I can't believe it myself that I'm 70, going to be 76. But the interesting thing about this is that when young Avery was up here, I know him as a little boy. His dad was a delightful, wonderful friend. My best audience were my jokes. He and his family, they laughed so loud in Hancock Park, the whole neighborhood knew they were laughing about my jokes. Everybody who came up here, and I see all my friends here, I can tell stories about each one. Memories and memories and memories and memories and parties. And you know what? The wonderful thing about it, as I said before, what do we really possess? Only what you have in your heart and your mind. Everything is immaterial. Jewelry, watches, rings, cars, mansions, trips, all that's fine. But what do you maintain within you and with whom do you share it? The warmth, and the feeling you all gave me tonight, know that one thing, Harry Weiss, you did it your way, and it was the right way. Because I love you all, and you radiate that back to me. And I thought of it, even though it's dangerous to be funnier than all the comedians, but the, ha but the ham in me comes out. And I thought of this wonderful joke about this little man who married 35 years, never cheated on his wife. His 18-year-old girl walks into his office. It's instant love. Sex. On the table, on the desk, on the floor, in the sauna, on the roof, on the ceiling, in the elevator. Continues. Goes on and on and on and on. And suddenly he goes to the Catholic church. He goes to the confession booth. He says, Father, Father, I've been married 35 years. I never cheated on my wife. I meet this young girl, 18 years old. It was on the floor, on the ceiling, on the roof, on the, in the elevator, in the restaurant. He says, I understand, my son. Say 30 Hail Marys. He's a father, I'm not Catholic, I'm Jewish. He said, why are you telling me? He said, I want to tell everybody. <laughs> That's the way I feel. I want to tell everybody about all you people. And then, 
had two little old aunts, Mabel and Gladys. And they were not religious, but they wanted to believe in the hereafter. And my aunt Mabel said to Gladys, whoever, which one of us goes first, try to communicate with each other so we'll know if there's a heaven or what's going on. They made that vow. Mabel went first. And one day she's looking, she's, Mabel, Mabel, talk to me, Mabel, talk to me. What's happening? And all of a sudden, Mabel says, Gladys, Gladys, it's me. Oh, I'm so glad to hear from you. Tell me what's happening. Oh, she says, everything's wonderful. Every morning we get up, she said, we have a big salad, and then we make love. Then we go to bed. Next morning we get up, we have a big salad and make love. Then we get up a salad and make love again. She says, what, you in heaven? She says, no, I'm a rabbit in Montana. <laughs> in Rome, addressing his public there. And he got up and he said, my people! And all of a sudden he collapses. They pick him up, what's the matter? What's the matter? The Pope, got a heart attack. He said, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? He need a new heart. The Pope says, where are I gonna get a new heart? They says, everybody love you, Pope. You get up, you ask one of your people. One of them will give you a heart. So he gets up, he says, my people, your Pope, he had a heart attack. Which one of you give me your heart? They all say, take my heart. Corvisol, Corvisol, take my heart. He says, oh, now I got a bigger problem. Which one of heart I take? <laughs> Just then a dove flies over and a feather falls out. Oh, thank you, God, you give me the answer. Who's ever shown the feather fall out, that's whose heart I take. Corvisol, Corvisol, Corvisol. so wonderful to me all these years. The judges, the lawyers, the friends, the clerks. I, I don't bring cookies. What can a clerk do for me but say hello to me, the bailiff? But you see, I've raised by, by Mama Weiss, and she always says, you spread it around. If you have it, share it. And if I like it, I bring it to them. And so this thing I like also. I enjoy this. I want to share this by, by the great Waldo Emerson. What a success to laugh often and love much, to win the respect of intelligent persons and the affection of children, to earn the approval of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to give of oneself without the slightest thought of return, to have played and laughed with enthusiasm and sung with exaltation, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to me to have succeeded. I share this with you people because at, at heart, I'm a teacher. I teach every day of my life the young people around me, the old people around me. This is one of the feelings I have for you. And further than that, I have one more. I've read it before, and someone here in the audience yesterday said, please bring your creed with you, Harry and I have it posted and I've handed it out to people. And so you'll know that at my 76th birthday, why I feel like 24. In some way, however small and secret, each of us is a little mad. Everyone is lonely at bottom and cries to be understood. But we can never entirely understand someone else and each of us remains part stranger even to those who love us. It is the weak 
who are cruel. Gentleness is to be expected only from the strong. Those who do not know fear are not really brave, for courage is the capacity to confront what can be imagined. You can understand people better if you look at them, no matter how old or impressive they may be, as if they are children. For most of us have never mature, we simply grow taller. Happiness comes only when we push our brains and our hearts to the farthest reaches of which we are capable. The purpose of life is to matter, to count, to stand for something, to have it make some difference that we lived at all. I hope I've accomplished that. I love you all. And before I say goodbye to you now, as you leave the auditorium or the cafe tonight, they're going to give you a ivory back scratcher as a compliment from Harry and Sammy because that's one thing you can't do yourself. You'll always remember me. Love you. Love you. start the roast now. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to say, uh, say a couple last things before uh, you um, uh, head for the uh, California Highway Patrol Sobriety Checkpoint across the street. Uh, oh, this is what, this is uh, Exhibit A here. Uh, okay, you got this? Okay, here you go. A um, couple things. First of all, um, again, let's thank Jamie Massad and the staff from the Laugh Factory. Round of applause. And I want to pay a special tribute to uh, uh, Debbie Vaughn from my office and um, Andrew Brower and Jonathan for their help. Okay, a round of applause for them. Thank you. And lastly, um, tonight's roast uh, has been videotaped, and you can order a copy. Uh, there will be um, a order blank as you're walking out the door from Chris Den Productions. Um, fill it out and send it in, and, and uh, you can make arrangements. Uh, to get a copy of this roast, okay? Thank you so much for attending. Thanks. Thank you.